Greetings, brothers and sisters. So there's going to be two things here, um, two greetings, because I already did a voiceover. But I was looking at the comments, and people pointed out that the video from yesterday just sort of ended, right? And the reason it ended um, the way it did, like I didn't say my ending was, you know, all these things that happened from when I was starting the video. I did that in the morning, and I thought I was going to cover a whole bunch of other stuff. I had some video clips to go through. Jojo Magoo stuff and things to do with Nancy and the rest of it. Um, but what ended up happening was, you know, all the things I described in the the second part of the video, um, you know, the second part of the story, which happened afterwards, but I installed it earlier in the sequence, right at the beginning of the video. And so at the end of the video, I said, well, let's move on to other stuff. And I meant to say, we're not going to do that. And, you know, but I forgot to do that because I'm so tired and all the things that were going on. And so I left off the ending and the, you know, be grateful part and the rest of it. But all those tabs are still open. I'll just cover it, I guess, um, maybe tomorrow. Well, tomorrow I'll do my um, Hollywood celebrities dropping like flies on my other channel. So anyways, um, I have an update here, so let's get to it. Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. I have a little bit of update. Well, first of all, Happy Festivus, <laughs> Merry Kwanzaa, and Merry Christmas, and Happy Chanaka, or Hanukkah as it's also pronounced. Um, so, you know, and that's just a joke. I don't want, you know, don't say Merry Christmas back, right? <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I'm not really wishing you all Merry Christmas because I don't care about it. I mean, you know, if you want it, then it's there. Um but, you know, I woke up in a good mood because we had heat. Um, as it worked out, we had heat. And I had a few more details to share. I'm going to release the Journey Series um, 82, which has a Christmas connotation and whispers from Babaji. I'm going to address some Christian stuff I haven't talked about before. And then everything to do with Saj Marg and, uh, you know, heartfulness with Daji and all the stuff. You know, things I've been going through. You know, it's a, it's one of the better, I don't know, better, but more... more um, story in it maybe I don't know I don't know I can't judge such things but um, I'm releasing the journey thing tonight it's already done so I'll be uploading that soon and I have a little update to give on my other channel my Apocalypse Now channel and I'm going to talk maybe a little bit about this in a different way over there um, this stuff that happened with the the propane Christmas miracle and so just to end the story um my wife and I came back and, you know, it was cold in the house and um, the guy came over. There was a guy who said he was an hour and a half out. He was in, you know, he's in a totally different region than the people that, um, uh, you know, usually deliver the propane to us, but part of the same company. And so um, he came out eventually. The house got down to, I think, 48 was its coldest and it was just really cold. You know, the dogs... Um, we got them like little sweaters and Tulsi was all right. She's, she weighs about 13, 14 pounds. She's a huge papillon, very thick, right? But Buddy's very scrawny and, you know, he's, it doesn't need as much. And you, know, you have to eat a lot of food to keep your body temperature up. And, um, and we went outside and like, we have this um, bird feeder. And I, sh I didn't want to include this in my other, you know, yesterday, but I forgot to say this. We have a bird feeder. My wife got it because I was talking about, um, we like seeing the yellow, um, not wobblers, warblers, um, the gold finches, I think they're called. And they're unique birds. They fly really an interesting pattern. And, and she got this bird feeder because I was talking about, you know, we, I'd like to see them closer up. And bird seed, and we put it on the back window. You know, it's one of those things that you, you know, has suction. And it sat there all summer and no birds came to it because there's plenty of things to eat and it's too close to the house. But then as winter started happening here, we started to see a lot of native sparrows, like the European sparrows suck, but they're neat looking even, even so. And a couple of other different birds came up and started eating the seed. And then I went out yesterday and I looked at the window uh, the day before and when it was cold and it was completely empty, right? They... The birds had savaged it because they had nothing to eat. And 
you know, birds, all animals in the cold need to, you have to have food. You know, if you live in a cold area, you, you have a lot of calories to keep yourself warm. You burn a lot of fuel trying to keep your body warm. And then my wife must have filled it. And I came out yesterday, you know, the day of the, we woke up to a cold house. And there was like five or six different sparrows and other birds on the bird feeder itself. Like they were just right there. We also have a hummingbird feeder out there in the summer. And I've never seen such activity, right? And then I went in to feed the cows yesterday. And I had put a stick in the door, like a like a little bit of a, you know, not a, a one by one, but a, like a slat, because it's um, the cows had we had a string on it, and the cows had put their head in and popped the string, in the area where their hay is, and they got in there and they knocked over the chicken feed and, and, um, you know, it was a whole thing. So I put a stick in there, and I've had the stick in there before. Um, we couldn't really keep the stick in there because the door was too. Um, it was like it wouldn't close properly. And so I, I had to take the doors off and take a saw and cut off a couple inches on the bottom of the door because it was always getting rocks and things or when it froze, you couldn't open the doors properly. And because of that, we can now push the doors. Um, it's like two big doors, like sort of, sort of farm doors in this barn. And you can push the doors together and, and put a the stick between the handle. And I went there, and there's bird poop all over it, which sucked. And there was a there was a dove that was next to the door, just sitting there. There's been a little bit of chicken seed, the chicken feed that the cows had knocked over, that was close to the door, and it must have been eating some of it underneath. Uh, but like the birds were just, you know. And so then I went over to where we keep where we get our packages and, and things like this. Um, there's a we got a package delivered, and there's bird uh, there was a uh, rabbit tracks all over the place. And obviously all the animals were struggling. Like there was things that we had to do during the cold. There was, um, we have two um, electoral, electoral outlets in the barn. And one was there before and we put another one in. And they operate differently. And if you hit the test button, uh, it turns on the one and it turns off the other. And so I can't remember which is which all the time. But we had a, a cord running from the barn, right? Um, to the chicken house and then the cord went into the chicken house and then you have these hanging chicken waters that are kept warm it has a a heater at the base but it had been freezing solid and my wife had tried it and my son had tried it and you know I I thought I had it fixed and they didn't let me know and so they both tried it and then my wife told me I went in and I finally fixed it right and I brought something out like the batteries I use for the, I have uh, rechargeable batteries and they have lights on them when they're being charged. And so I brought that out. So I plugged that in to make sure that it was working because you, know, you can't tell from the, the water heater. So I figured it out, but I was freezing by the end. It was like a 10 minute process, right? So that was a whole thing. And so, you know, these animals were in crisis is what I'm saying. Just, I mean, they're just all trying to survive because they're outside, right? And, you know, even being in the house with no heat, I think it's quite significantly, um, you know, worse. And so the guy comes over and first he checks the propane tank for leaks and then he filled the propane tank and he came inside and he was making sure the pilot light was lit. And again, it was like a, a new furnace. And then I was still concerned it might not turn on. And at first he didn't. And then, um, uh, you know, it it was something where the, the whole thermostat the the interface on the thermostat I guess he had restarted it from the basement but I was watching the thing and it was glitching out right and I remembered we had we wanted to get somebody you know when they put the furnace in they had to rewire it and I didn't know if they did it properly because we didn't have enough wires there wasn't enough electricity in the old thermostat to to uh, have one of these ones where you could use it where you could turn it off and on with the phone and all these things right and then I thought well this is the first time it's gotten cold enough to kick in the propane furnace. Before it was always the, you know, it was always running out of the central air unit outside. And eventually he found the, you know, in terms of the interface, he found um, where you could adjust it manually. You could either let the thermostat itself decide which thing should run 
you know, because it has an outdoor th- thermometer. It's supposed to be like below 10 degrees, the propane one runs, and then above it, the outdoor thing runs, right? Um, but it didn't work at first, and finally he got it to work. And then he said, you know, there's supposed to be this this um, this monitor, like a Wi-Fi monitor, like a smart meter type of thing, that tells the company that you're almost out of propane. And he had one, but it went to his region, so he didn't want to put it in here. But he says they should be installing it. And they said, you know, they've lost a lot of drivers around where you guys live, which is what I was speculating about, that they couldn't keep up with the the customers because they didn't have enough employees. You know, this is the whole thing that's been suffering. And so, um, you know, these are the kind of things that are going to start happening because this company had been fine. It had been great. We never had an issue. They would come. I only saw them come like two or three times. They would leave a receipt, which, you know, every, you know, whatever, three times a year. And there was no interaction. So we just took it for granted. It was always going to be filled. And then at the worst possible time, you know, when it's the coldest it could be, and on a holiday, day before a holiday, it goes out. And I was like, you know, we might not get heat for another week, right? And, you know, we started to heat up. And it was like we were thawing out. And, you know, like I said before, I've experienced cold before, but not like this. Because there's a chill that you get that, you know, I don't know what it is, right? But it's like, you know, I've been taking cold bass, and I swam in the ocean recently when it was like 50-something degrees, right? And the bath water is probably between 50 and 60 degrees somewhere. And I've been taking these cold baths, and I come out warmer. Like, there's often heat coming out of my system. It's tough getting in, but once I, you know, I like to get my head underwater. And really, I enjoy the cold water in my head. Like, it feels good. Like, I must have a lot of heat. Like I, like I say, I run hot. And so it was... You know, it, was, it wasn't much colder than that in the house. And I was, you know, wearing, wearing warm clothing. We went out. We were in the hot car for a while. But as the heat started to kick in, you know, I was like, wow, we're just like we're thawing out here. And it wasn't, you know, it was only 50 degrees. It wasn't, I mean, people are experiencing much, much worse and, you know, for longer periods of time. But, like, it's it must be something about your, your living environment it needs to be a certain level. Or your, you know, even with clothing and hats. You know, we slowly, I was wearing my coat, I took my coat off, and then I was able to take my hat off, you know. Um, (laughs) And it was just, um, you know, a weird thing. And my dogs were now, you know, Buddy was uh, stopped shivering. And it was traumatic, not in the sense of, like, being scared or worried or, you know, trauma, like a big bang event, but, like, it affected us. Like, it put us in, you know, it was like sort of just like a state of shock. And, you know, I took a really hard nap. Um, I was like really tired. Like the other thing is I didn't get enough sleep that last night, not because of the cold, but just I was up meditating. It was just other things were going on. I, I just um, feeling the anger in my system of things like this. And I was a little bit restless. And then, there, you know, there's a cold thing. And, you know, I um, was saying to my wife that I uh, like, I went over and looked at the thermostat. It was now at 62 degrees or 63 degrees. And the previous night, I went to turn the heat down to 65, and I turned it down to 65, and I'm like, wow, it's really cold in here. I went over to the thermostat, and it was set at 65, but the temperature was 62. And I'm like, well, that's not good. That's when I realized the heat was off. And and she was like, yeah, that's only a day ago. Like, it doesn't seem like it was like, I mean, it was like a long experience, right? Um, you know, it was like this, you know, kind of epic experience because, You know, what I've realized from all this is, I mean, God, if this is, you know, only one day of not having heat, and of course it was the coldest time of the year, but if that's what's going to, you know, when the system collapses, I mean, like, it's going to be a hardship. Like, this would, you know, we would have adjusted to this, but, you know, when there's no food and there's just no electricity and, you know, you don't have all these things that you become accustomed to, and being an older person, it's more significant because I was telling my wife about this, you know, this time where, you know, I broke up with my, um, I was engaged to this, this nurse and we lived together for a while. We broke up and I moved to Massachusetts. And it was a time when I was waiting tables and I found this cool loft apartment and the guy moving out 
had a job as a waiter and he said, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll tell them about you and you can take my spot. Right. Which is what happened. And so I took this guy's apartment and, you know, I ended up working in the restaurant he was working in and it was a loft apartment. It was the third floor. And, uh, on the bottom floor, there had been, there was a daycare and the second floor used to be, um, the people used to live above the daycare, but now they had moved to another house. But so they were, they were gone during the weekends. And the, you know, the third floor loft had a separate entrance on the side. It was this rickety stairs, you know, out in the cold in Massachusetts, right? I'd moved from Connecticut to Massachusetts. And it had a wood burning stove. And the guy had some firewood, which I bought off of him. You know, he had some leftover firewood that he was, you know, leaving behind. And I didn't replenish it. And I didn't know much about wood stoves. And I eventually burned through all the wood. You know, I was working at this restaurant. It was, was this, you know, where I learned the term mass holes, right? Just these, you know, near Holyoke was, these people were from Holyoke. And, you know, I was living in the five college area. And the Holyoke people were nightmare, right? Just really rude. The kitchen staff was like really vulgar to some of these women who were married. Like they were in their 30s and had kids. And the things these guys would say to them, I was like, wow, this place is a mess, right? really disliked that rest drive. You know, tail end of me waiting tables, I was ready to move on and do something else, right? Like it was just, you know, it was a combination of things. And, you know, I wasn't making much money there and I ended up quitting there and going to another restaurant and was, you know, sort of struggling. And I didn't buy firewood and it was cold. Like it was really cold in the apartment, especially on the weekends. When, when, they would, when the daycare was there, there was heat that would rise up you know, so it's a little bit less, but, um, you know, I was able to suffer through it, right? I just, you know, there was a time where I was sleeping in my brother's attic, similar thing, and it was so cold you could see your breath, and I'd wear a hat to bed and sleep in a sleeping bag. When I was in college, you know, it didn't bother me, right? You know, I, you know, I mean, I maybe would get a chill, but, you know, and, and camping out, my family and I camped out, you know, we camped out for like three or four months you know, my, before we, you know, went to India. And there was a time where um, we camped out in Mount Pisgah in North Carolina. That's where we started off. And it was in, it was in June, but it was cold there and it rained. And it was like probably 45 degrees in June. <laughs> it was so cold. And it, we got about three inches of rain. There was puddles in our campsite. And I was like, my God, this is how we're starting off. Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was frigid and things. So. You know, I've experienced cold that's much colder than what we experienced for longer periods of time. You know, my body tolerated it and, you know, I dealt with it. But, um, you know, this was a like a hard thing to get through. Like it was just a huge relief and we slept well and, you know, the dogs, I mean, it was just better. And it started to warm up here a little bit. I mean, it was, you know, it was cold. It was like negative 45 or negative 50 with the wind chill. So it was, you know, there's three days of just and going outside and, having to deal with the animals and get them water and feed them and all the things that we were doing, it was, you know, it was significant. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing. Um, but if, you know, this is the start of a lot of tumultuous collapse and a loss of services and a loss of things, you know, where, where they just can't deliver to you your lifestyle that you're used to. Um, and, you know, the people who are older and more dependent on it and have less ability to adapt and change, you know, this is what we're all facing is what I've been talking about for a while here. Um, it's just an example of it. Anyways, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm going to release another video here and then a short little voiceover on my other channel to go along with this. And, um, you know, that's it. <laughs> my Christmas miracle story. The propane miracle. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely pointing from the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.